So last time we have seen, uh, we have introduced the notions of uh, univalence and function extensionality and uh, the notion of a set in our system. Today we are going at first to discuss uh, how classical logic can be done in this framework. So we have uh, seen that uh, uh, through the propositions as types uh, isomorphism, uh, an existential statement uh, is, uh, is interpreted uh, as a sigma type. This means that uh, um, to prove a statement uh, is needed an evidence of uh, the element X uh, such that uh, B of X is provable. Something uh, similar holds for uh, this junction. This means that uh, uh, types uh, can contain uh, more information than uh, just truth or falsity. Indeed, uh, a term uh, is an algorithm uh, which uh, shows how to construct an evidence uh, of the truth uh, of the proposition which is represented by the type. This happens uh, in uh, intuitionistic logic, but uh, this is not what happens in classical logic. Indeed, uh, in classical logic, it's we can prove uh, the existence of an object uh, of which uh, we are unable, to, which we are unable to construct. For example, uh, this can be done uh, using uh, the law of double negation. So um, it is provable uh, that uh, um, the law of uh, double negation and the law of excluded middle uh, are incompatible with the univalence. Indeed, uh, if we define uh, not A as uh, A arrow zero, it is possible to prove uh, both that uh, uh, it uh, does not happen that uh, there is a type uh, such that, uh, that sorry, for all uh, types A, we have that uh, not not A implies A. And also um, it is not the case that uh, for all the types, uh, it holds uh, A plus not A. I will not prove uh, those results, uh, but uh, uh, the important thing is that uh, they are both proved uh, taking uh, A as the type two, as uh, we, have, we have already done for, uh, to prove that uh, universes are uh, not sets. And uh, what uh, is worth not noticing uh, is that uh, this type has two distinct terms. So um, to obtain uh, classical logic, uh, we want to restrict uh, our attention uh, to some types. Uh, and uh, those are the types uh, whose uh, information is only a truth value. And uh, this allows to exclude the type two. So uh, we introduce the notion of uh, mere propositions. And uh, we say that type P is a mere proposition if uh, all its terms uh, are equal. And uh, we call this property is prop of P. In um, using this notion, uh, we can rewrite uh, both uh, the laws uh, of uh, excluded middle and uh, double negation. And uh, so we write uh, the law of excluded middle saying that uh, for, for all say, prop A implies A or not A or A plus not A, and uh, the law of double negation that for all types A, if A is a proposition, then not not A implies A. With uh, this reformulation, we have that uh, uh, both the laws uh, are independent uh, from a univalent type theory. So um, this time uh, we can, uh, if we want, uh, uh, assume them as axioms, uh, which is uh, what is done usually in uh, classical logic. So let us see a couple of properties of the proposition. We have that uh, if uh, P and Q are uh, two mere propositions uh, and uh, there is uh, an arrow from uh, F from P to Q and uh, another arrow G from Q to P, then uh, mm, P and Q are congruent. So uh, to prove it, uh, we notice that uh, since P is a mere proposition, then uh, for all uh, x uh, in P, we have that uh, g of f of x uh, is equal to x because uh, all uh, the terms in P are equal. 
and uh, the same also for all the term the y in q so we have that uh, f of g of y is equal to one so we have that uh, f and g are quasi inverses and so p and q are uh, are congruent it also holds that uh, if uh, p is uh, a mere proposition which has a term x0 then it is congruent to one in this case, uh, we take uh, an arrow f uh, from uh, p to 1, uh, which maps uh, all the axes in uh, the only element of 1, and uh, g from uh, 1 to p, which maps uh, um, the terms uh, u in uh, x0. And uh, so from the preview previous proposition uh, and uh, the fact that uh, 1 is, of course, a mere proposition, we obtain the claim. Now, a few examples. We have that uh, if uh, A and B are mere propositions, uh, then uh, their uh, product is. Uh, we prove that uh, taking uh, two terms, uh, x and y, in uh, A times B. And uh, we know that uh, x is equal to the pair of its uh, projections, and the same holds for y. And uh, uh, since uh, a, a and B are mere propositions, uh, we have that uh, the first project projection of X is equal to the first projection of Y, and the same holds for the second projections. And so, of course, uh, X is equal to Y. Also, we have that uh, if uh, B is a type uh, which depends on A, such that uh, b of x uh, is uh, a mere proposition for every x, then uh, the dependent product uh, p x of type a b of x uh, is a mere proposition. Let's take uh, two terms f and g in uh, the dependent product. And uh, we have that uh, um, they are pointwise equal for each x because uh, b of x is a mere proposition. And so by function exponentiality, we have that f is equal to g. This results uh, um, proves in particular that uh, um, if b is a mere proposition, so is uh, a r of b, which implies again that uh, um, not a is always uh, a mere proposition because uh, zero is uh, and uh, not a is uh, written as uh, a to zero. We have seen uh, a couple of type formers uh, which uh, preserve uh, the property of being a mere proposition. It doesn't hold uh, always. Indeed, uh, we have seen that uh, um, well, two is uh, one plus one, but uh, it's not a mere proposition. So we have that uh, the coproduct uh, does not is of uh, A and B is not uh, in general a mere, a mere uh, proposition, if uh, even if uh, A and B are. This also because, uh, as uh, we've seen, uh, A plus B is uh, a constructive uh, sort uh, of OR. And uh, the same holds uh, for uh, the sigma types, uh, which are uh, a constructive uh, interpretation of uh, the existence. We would like to uh, be able uh, to, uh, anyway, to preserve uh, the property of being a main proposition to do classical logic and to remain inside it. We do this uh, by um, truncating the the, those uh, type constructors uh, to obtain uh, a classical sort uh, of uh, or end exist. And um, to do this, uh, we use uh, the notion of higher inductive types. We define uh, a particular higher inductive type, which is called truncation. Uh, so, uh, given a type A, we can define its truncation, which is this uh, A in the couple bars, such that, uh, well, uh, for each uh, uh, term in A, there is a corresponding term in the, in, in the truncation of A, and uh, uh, all the terms in the truncation of A are equal. 
So we have that uh, if A is inhabited, so is uh, its truncation, but uh, its truncation is a mere proposition by construction. It is also required that uh, uh, if B is a mere proposition and uh, F is a map from A to B, then there is uh, another map, G, from the truncation of A to B, such that uh, uh, G of uh, bar A, so the um, corresponding term of A in the truncation type, in the truncated type, is uh, equal to F of A for all the terms uh, in A. So uh, this means that uh, uh, a truncated type uh, uh, contains uh, only one information, uh, inherits uh, only one informa information from uh, A, which is uh, that uh, it is inhabited, and so that uh, corresponding proposition is true. This allows, this allows to define uh, a new correspondence between, uh, not, not anymore between uh, types and propositions, but uh, um, this time between uh, those types which are mere propositions uh, and uh, the propositions in the classical logic. So uh, we have again uh, that one is mapped in the truth, uh, zero is the false, uh, the product is and. This time we have that uh, the truncation of the coproduct uh, is mapped uh, in, the, in a classical version of OR. Again, the arrow is uh, implication pi is for all, and uh, the truncation of the sigma type uh, is uh, a classical version of uh, the existential quantifier. Now, um, this leads to, to study what happens uh, um, to the axiom of choice. We we would like, uh, as in classical logic, to be able to treat it uh, as an axiom. But uh, it happens that, uh, well, um, the, well the, the statement uh, is uh, of the axiom of choice is, uh, if for all uh, x in x uh, exists a in a of x, uh, such that uh, holds the property uh, p of x and a, then uh, there exists a function, a dependent function g, um, of type uh, pi uh, x of type a, a of x, such that uh, for all the terms x in x uh, holds uh, the property p of uh, x and g of x. Well, uh, if we use the canonical uh, propositions as types uh, interpretation, in which uh, we interpret uh, existence uh, with, uh, with sigma, we have that uh, this statement is always true. And moreover, that uh, um, the uh, antecedents and the conclusion are equivalent. Let's uh, prove this result. Well, uh, let's take uh, a type X, another type uh, X, and uh, um, a type pi, uh, a type P, sorry, which depends on uh, pi so type x is. Then uh, we can construct a function from this type, which is the one of the antecedents, to this other type, which is the, the one of the conclusion, which maps uh, an arrow, a dependent uh, uh, function f into the pair of uh, lambda x dot uh, the first projection of uh, x of a, f of x and uh, lambda x dot uh, the second projection of uh, f of x. We can prove, we will prove that uh, this function is an equivalence. So we use at first the induction principle for sigma types and uh, we uh, reduce to the case of a pair. And uh, we define a quasi inverse uh, mapping uh, uh, the pair G and H to lambda X, uh, the pair G of X, uh, H of X. Then uh, we take uh, the, the, the dependent function F, 
and uh, composing with uh, this map, uh, we obtained the function lambda x dot first projection of f of x, second projection of x. But we have that uh, um, the pair of the first and second projection of f of x is indeed equal to f of x, which uh, um, and uh, so by function extensionality, the equation six is equal to f. Uh, now the, the, the opposite, let's take uh, the pair uh, g of x, g and uh, h. Again, uh, composing, uh, we obtain uh, lambda x dot uh, g of h, uh, lambda x uh, dot uh, h of x, which is, uh, uh, as before, judgmentally equal to the pair uh, g and h. So we have uh, proved that uh, the, the previous function is indeed uh, in equivalence. This is not what uh, we would expect. Uh, we don't want to have uh, an axiom of choice, uh, which is always true. We want to, to treat, uh, to have it uh, as an axiom. Also uh, notice that uh, the function g is uh, specified from the very beginning. And so there is no real choice to, to be made. So, we reformulate the axiom of choice in type theory using truncation. Well, uh, also the hypotheses are uh, a bit stricter. So we take uh, x, a, and p such that uh, x is a set, a of x is a set for all x, and p of x and a is a mere proposition for all x and a. Then uh, we rephrase the axiom of choice, uh, saying that uh, pi x of type x uh, of the truncation of the sigma type uh, sigma a of type a of x uh, p x of a uh, x and a implies uh, the truncation of uh, the type in the conclusion. This can be rephrased again uh, as before in the exact same way. But this time, uh, existence uh, is interpreted uh, in the classical sense. We have that uh, the second truncation, the one in the ecodomain, means that uh, the function g is not uh, determined or specified in any way. We only say that uh, this function exists. We don't require to be able to construct it. It holds that uh, this new formulation of the axiom of choice uh, in, is uh, independent uh, from univalent type theory, which uh, is what uh, we expected and we wanted. And, and so it is indeed an axiom. Now, this was all for uh, this notion of uh, classical logic. Uh, the, in the last, very last part of the course. Sorry? In the very last part of the course, uh, we will uh, analyze in details uh, the notion of equivalence. We have uh, used the one notion of equivalence uh, to define the univalence axiom, but uh, now we will see that uh, there are indeed uh, three different notions uh, which are equivalent and uh, can be used. And uh, at first to do so, we will uh, introduce the notion of uh, contractibility. So, we have that uh, all the terms uh, of a mere proposition are equal, but uh, a, a proposition, of course, can be empty with no terms. We exclude this uh, possibility with the contractible types. Indeed, uh, we say that uh, a type is uh, constructible if uh, there is uh, a term A of type A, which is called the center of construction such that uh, all uh, the other terms of A are equal to the center. And uh, we write this uh, property as is contra of A. It is possible to characterize uh, this notion with uh, some results, which we are not going to prove, uh, but uh, will uh, be useful later. And uh, we say that uh, given a type, 
it is uh, logically, equi logically equivalent that uh, A is contractible, A is a mere proposition with uh, a term, and uh, A is equivalent to the type one. Also, it can be proved that uh, if uh, A is a type uh, with uh, a term, then uh, the type uh, uh, sigma x of type A, A equal x is contractible, and that uh, if uh, P is uh, a type which depends on A, we have that uh, if P of X is contractible for every X in A, then uh, the sigma type uh, sigma X of type A, P of X uh, is equivalent to A. And uh, if uh, A is, contra is contra contractible with the center A, then uh, the same sigma type uh, is equivalent uh, to P of A. We can generalize this notion to functions. And so um, we have that, uh, we define that uh, at first, uh, if uh, um, F is a map from A to B and uh, Y is a term of type B, then uh, we call uh, fiber of F, fiber of F over Y, the term sigma X of type A, F of X equal to Y. And uh, we say that uh, a map F if, uh, is contract, con contractible if uh, the, the fiber fib F of X is constructible for each Y. And uh, we define it in the same way, uh, saying in, is, uh, that uh, is contra F is equal to phi Y of type B is contra phi fib F of Y. We will see that uh, this notion, the contractility of the uh, function, is uh, one of the possible definitions uh, of, um, of equivalence. Now, we can discuss uh, the, yeah, the definitions. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, uh, we have seen that uh, the more intuitive notion uh, is uh, Quimb which is uh, uh, the requirement that uh, the function is invertible. But uh, uh, this notion doesn't work. So um, we want uh, a, a new type, is a quiv, which uh, satisfies uh, three conditions. We need to have that uh, quiv of f implies uh, is a quiv of f, also the opposite. And uh, we also want that uh, is a quiv of f is a mere proposition. Of course, uh, quiv satisfies uh, the first two conditions, but uh, uh, we will see that uh, uh, quiv of f is not a mere proposition. So, uh, to obtain this, this uh, result, let's prove it first uh, that uh, if uh, we have uh, a map f from a to b such that uh, Queen of f is inhabited, then it is equivalent to um, pi x of x equal x. Well, uh, to prove this result, uh, we notice that uh, queen of f is inhabited by hypothesis. And so um, uh, we have that uh, there is uh, E of type is equiv f. And so um, we have uh, that uh, uh, we have a pair uh, F and D of type uh, A congruent to B. By univalence, uh, this uh, uh, we have that uh, it that we have uh, um, from A equal B to A congruent B is an equivalence. And so we can uh, write the pair E um, as uh, it to have F, uh, P, sorry, for a certain P of type A equal B. By path induction, we can assume that uh, P is indeed the reflexivity, which implies uh, that uh, F is the identity on A. And so we only need to prove uh, the, the statement uh, for a quimb of the identity.
we have uh, by definition that uh, with quimv of the identity is uh, sigma g of type a to a um g uh, is uh, homotopically equivalent to the identity and uh, again g is homotopically equivalent to the identity and uh, this is equivalent uh, to writing that uh, um, there is uh, G from A to A, which is uh, equal to the identity. This holds uh, by function extensionality. And uh, it is possible to prove that uh, this is equivalent to the fact that uh, there is uh, H of type uh, sigma G, G equal to the identity such that uh, the first projection of H is the identity. We have that uh, uh, by one of the previous lemmas. Uh, we stated the type uh, sigma G, G equal to the identity is constructible with, is constructible with center identity on A and the reflexivity on the identity of A. And uh, uh, we have uh, by another result uh, that uh, this type is equivalent to saying that uh, the identity is equal to the identity, which uh, by function extensionality is equivalent uh, to pi x of type A, x equal x. Uh, we have used uh, the, um, the univalence to prove this result, uh, but uh, it is claimed in uh, the book Homotopy Type Theory that uh, it is not necessary for, uh, for the proof. So now we state uh, two other results. We have that uh, uh, if uh, P is uh, a type which depends on A such that uh, P of X uh, is a mere proposition for every X, and uh, U and V are two terms uh, of uh, the sigma type on A and P of X. Then uh, if uh, the first projection of uh, U is equal to um, the first projection of V, we have that uh, U and V are equal. Also, we have that uh, if uh, A is a type, and uh, uh, there are a term A of type A and uh, another term uh, Q of type A equal A, such that uh, the type A equal A is a set. Then uh, for all X in A, it holds that uh, the truncation of A equal X is inhabited. And uh, for all the path uh, from A to A, we have, B, we have that uh, uh, P composed to Q is equal to Q composed to P, then uh, it can be proved that uh, there is uh, a depending function F from uh, A uh, of uh, type uh, pi X uh, of type A X equal X, such that uh, F of A is equal to Q. Now, we are ready to prove that uh, there are two types, A and B, and uh, a map F from A to B, such that uh, Quimv is not a mere proposition. Indeed, uh, by the equivalence we proved before, we, we just uh, have to prove that uh, there is type A, such that uh, pi x of type A x equal x is not a mere proposition. Then, uh, uh, since, uh, uh, of course, uh, Quimv of the identity of A is inhabited, then uh, it is not a mere proposition. It follows that uh, it is equivalent to the previous type, and so it is not a mere proposition. Now, uh, we see that, again, uh, the type 2 is used in the proof, and uh, we define A as sigma x of type U truncation of uh, two equal x. Now um, we need to find uh, a term g of uh, the dependent type on uh, x equal x, which is not equal to uh, the canonical term of uh, this type, which is uh, lambda x dot reflexivity on x. 
take the term A, which is uh, the pair of uh, two, and uh, uh, the bar of, of uh, reflect two on two, which is uh, uh, the correspondent uh, of uh, the reflexivity on two in the truncated type. This term is uh, of type A, and uh, we have that uh, by univalence and uh, um, a previous result, A equal A is uh, equivalent to the type two equal two, which is uh, equivalent to the type uh, two is equivalent to two. Now, um, so we can um, take Q of type A equal, equal A as uh, the path which uh, corresponds to the map E in uh, two congruent to two, which is uh, defined that as uh, E of zero is uh, one and E of one is zero. We also have uh, that, uh, um, so uh, we have that uh, both the sites are set because uh, the second one is. And so uh, the, the first uh, assumption of lemma for Q pre holds. It can be shown that also the second and third assumptions hold. And so um, we, we can conclude that uh, there is a map G of type uh, phi of X of type A x equal x, such that uh, g of a is q. But uh, we have that uh, e, this, uh, this map e, is not equal to the identity of a. And so um, q is not equal to the reflexivity on a, which means that uh, g is not equal to lambda x dot reflexivity on x. So um, we have constructed the, the map we needed, and uh, we can conclude that uh, by x of a of type a x of a, x equal x is not a mere proposition. And so um, we have that uh, quimv is not always of uh, of f is not always a mere proposition. So um, we need uh, a different uh, definition for uh, for the notion of equivalence. And uh, we have that uh, we can find uh, three different notions, uh, which uh, satisfies uh, um, the, the three requirements uh, and uh, which are equivalent. Well, uh, the first one is uh, the one we used. So the, the fact that uh, a map needs to have a left and a right inverse. The second one is uh, the fact that uh, a map needs to be contractible. And uh, this is uh, the third one. So we say that uh, a, a map F from A to B is a half adjoint equivalence if there are a function G from B to A and two homotopies, eta of type G composed to F homotopically equivalent and uh, epsilon of type G com F composed to G um, homotopically equivalent to the identity on B, such that there is the thermopy tau of type pi X of type A F of eta X equal to epsilon of Fx of Fx. We call uh, um, this notion uh, written uh, in uh, this way in a uh, is uh, HAE of F. And uh, well, we define again the notion of uh, B invertibility. We say that uh, 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 a left inverse uh, if uh, there is G from B to H to A um, such that uh, G composed to F uh, is uh, homotopically equivalent to the identity on A and uh, that F uh, has a right inverse uh, if there is again G such that uh, F composed to G is uh, equivalent to the identity on B 
And uh, we say that uh, the map F is uh, B invertible if it has both uh, left and right inverse. And uh, this is the notion which we used uh, from the beginning. And uh, it can be proved uh, that uh, given a map F, the types um, is uh, H, A, E of F, B inv of F, and uh, is contra of F, satisfy the three conditions uh, for uh, the definition of equivalence. More moreover, we have that uh, those three, three definitions uh, are equivalent. And so that uh, they can be uh, all used uh, with, with no difference uh, to define uh, is equiv of f. Well, uh, um, the whole proof of uh, this theorem can be found uh, in uh, the homotopy type theory book. Now we we only show that uh, the notions of uh, the notion of uh, coinvertibility implies uh, the invertibility, and uh, on the contrary, the invertibility implies uh, coinv. And uh, we stress that uh, all those definitions uh, are uh, mere propositions. And uh, that to prove uh, that uh, they are mere, mere proposition, uh, function as the function extensionality axiom is needed. So, um, well, uh, if we have uh, that uh, a, a map uh, G and uh, two homotopies uh, up and beyond, stating that uh, uh, f is uh, coinvertible, uh, we can uh, easily obtain uh, the, um, that uh, f uh, is uh, b-invertible uh, using g both uh, as uh, uh, left and right inverse. And uh, conversely, if we have uh, a left inverse g with homotopy a alpha and uh, a right inverse h with homotopy beta, then uh, uh, we can obtain, uh, um, well, we use uh, the map G as uh, inverse of F with uh, the homotopies alpha and beta prime, where uh, um, beta prime of X is uh, defined as gamma of, X, of F of X composed beta of X. Um, in which uh, gamma of x is defined as beta of g of x composed to h of alpha of x. You can check that uh, those, uh, those definitions uh, lead to the, to the right equivalence, to the right homotopy, sorry. And uh, well, to conclude the course, uh, I just state this, uh, this result. It is uh, one of the exercises of the homotopy type theory book. Uh, if you are interested, I can send you one solution of, uh, of this exercise. And uh, it shows why it is um, important uh, that to require that uh, is equiv of F is a mere proposition to introduce uh, univalence. Indeed, if uh, we define uh, um, Another notion of uh, universe. Well, if we define, sorry, uh, this uh, new new term, id to quinv of A and B of type A equal B to this new notion of equivalence, which is sigma f from A to B quinv of f by the path induction in the obvious way. Well. Um, Defining uh, as uh, quinv univalence uh, the modified uh, form of univalence, uh, which states that uh, this new term uh, as a quasi inverse. Uh, well, uh, it can be proved uh, that uh, um, this new notion uh, of uh, univalence uh, is uh, inconsistent. And well, this concludes uh, this course. Uh,